All right, guys, welcome to the channel. So today I want to talk about RV suspension upgrades, specifically for Class C motorhomes. That's what I had, and that's a common type of motorhome. Class C motorhomes are generally on a van chassis, usually like the Ford uh, E450 or E350 uh, chassis. You'll also see them on some of the Chevy uh, as well, but Fords are the predominant uh, motorhome on the Class C. Class Cs are the ones that look like they have a van with a cab over. So I want to talk about some suspension upgrades because when you get those from the factory they don't do a lot of suspension enhancements from the factory they basically just lengthen the the frame of the uh the chassis they get they they build the motorhome on it and they haven't done a lot of things as far as like the shocks or the sway bars or the the springs or the alignment they haven't done a lot of that stuff and so there's some things you can do to improve that and if you've driven your rv or you're considering an RV, you know exactly what I'm talking about is the, the steering and suspension is not great and it can really make for an unpleasant driving experience. So let's talk about some of these items and prioritize them as the things you're going to want to look at when it comes to upgrading your RV suspension. Okay, so I bought my Class C RV. It was a, my, my most recent one's a 2019. It's a Forest River Sunseeker. It's a 32 foot Class C. I bought it used. It had about 20,000 miles when I bought it. I bought it from a dealer. And when I got it, the one of the front tires was about half tread. The other one was a brand new tire. And it was like more of a, more of like a all-terrain tire. It was kind of a, a weird combination. But it didn't have matching tires as far as the tread depth. So one was half half used, one was new. And that contributed to the poor handling. So one of the first things I did is new tires on the front specifically. So I wanted to get new tires. That way I have matching tires that the treads are equal. And after that, I got an alignment done. Alignment is probably one of the big things that you can do to really improve the handling, the alignment. If you're constantly having to fight the fight the RV to really stay in the lane, it really makes for a miserable driving experience. You'll be white knuckling the whole time. You're going to be you know, it's just going to be a really stressful driving experience. And that's how mine handled when I got it. So new tires, alignment, these are really the, the first critical steps to getting your RV handling well. Okay, one other thing I did is the Roadmaster Steering Stabilizer. Now, I don't think you necessarily need the Roadmaster. This one has a spring on it, and that's not ne maybe necessary, but you do want to upgrade the steering stabilizer because it's going to prevent those wheels from, you know, bouncing around uh, side to side. And it's going to help with the, uh, you know, really just the tracking of the of the vehicle a little better. So the Roadmaster steering stabilizer that's a good that's a good option. Now with all of these options though, none of these are real cheap options. You know, maybe the alignment, a couple hundred bucks for the alignment, but you know, new tires those can be expensive. This this was this was a couple hundred dollars the steering stabilizer. And then the other thing I did was the upgraded sway bars. Now the sway bars. Are just the factory Ford ones and they're super small and they're really not adequate for the weight that this RV is carrying. So a company called Helwig makes an upgraded sway bar front and rear. This is th this really made a, a big difference. As I did each of these things, the, the ride, the handling, the steering, the suspension all felt marginally better each kind of each step I did. One thing's just not going to make a huge difference. Alignment's probably going to make the biggest difference. But each thing that you're going to do, you know, it's just going to make just a small improvement in the handling, which is great because, you know, the, the handling and suspension, I think, is, you know, really poor on these RVs. And the better you can get it, the more comfortable it's going to be. If, if your RV's easy to drive and comfortable to drive, you're going to want to get out and want to use it more. Okay. So the sway bars, I would consider those as, you know, top of the list when it comes to uh, modifying that. Because these are big houses, they have a lot of, a lot of wind resistance. As you're, as you're passing cars or cars are passing you or a semi-truck passes you on the highway, you know. Okay, one other thing I also did was the sumo springs. The sumo springs. Now, this made a pretty, this made a pretty big difference. We did a 5,000-mile road trip after doing these five items. So the tires, the alignment, the stabilizer, the sway bars, and the sumo springs in the front. I specifically say that because the front, the fronts are super easy to do. You can do the sumo springs in the rear. I didn't do that. Or you could do what the, you could do the airbags where you would fill up the bags to a certain PSI and it's going to help with the, uh, you know, the rear suspension. So rear airbags 
or sumo springs you can do for the rear. I didn't do that. That was going to be kind of my next step to really kind of start enhancing my, my, my suspension and st steering, making it feel better. Another thing you might want to consider is new shocks. Now, the shocks that generally come on are very basic. They're not, you know, they're not the best you can get. You can get some new shocks, like Kony makes a, gr a great shock for these, uh, these Ford chassis. As, or, or some Bilstein shocks, for example. Those are some options. And th those are not going to be cheap options. They're probably going to be a couple hundred dollars a piece. So you do all four, you know, there's, gonna, there's uh, you know, $800 in, in, in new shocks. So these two I haven't done, but they're things that I'm considered, that, that I would be considering to really increase the comfort of the vehicle. So as you slowly upgrade the suspension, you're going to have a lot more improvement. It's going to be, it's going to handle a lot better. Um, these are the things that I've compiled it during my research, knowing that, you know, the RV doesn't handle great from the factory, so I need to make some improvements. And, you know, you can slowly make improvements as, you know, your budget allows because, you know, not only buying the RV is expensive, but these options are not, ex not, not cheap either. But, you know, the sumo springs in the front, the sway bar, the alignment, the tires are probably the, the, the top things I would do. And then probably shocks. I, I fit, what I was figuring is... You know what? When, when my shocks are ready to are ready to be replaced, anyways, when they're worn out, at you know, I was thinking maybe fifty thousand miles, for example, new shocks. I could throw those on, and you know, two birds, one stone. I'm upgrading the shocks because the old ones are kind of worn out. But uh, as budget allows, you can kind of upgrade these things, these items, and I'll leave links in the description of uh, of these items that I used in mine. But yeah, after a uh, you know, after about a 5,000 mile road trip with just doing these, basically doing these five things here, it really made it, it really made it, uh, it made a difference. And I was happy that I had that, especially because all of our driving was basically highway driving. And, you know, there was inclement weather where there was weather and cars passing us and semi trucks. And it did make it a lot more enjoyable driving experience by just doing these five things. The shocks, the rear airbags, that's kind of an, a, an additional step you can do. But I would consider these things as primary to, to take care of right away. And then as you're using your RV more, you know, to really get it to that next level, you would go go here. So hopefully you found this help, information helpful, especially if you're shopping for an RV or you're just looking to improve the ride like I was. Start start with this list and kind of work your way down. A lot of this stuff you can do yourself. The, the shocks, I was hesitant to do uh, buy those because... I knew I was going to have to take it somewhere to get those done just because the fronts, I've watched some videos and, the, and, and doing the front shocks on, the, on, the, on those Ford van chassis just seemed like a real pain and I didn't really, really want to tackle that. So that's really why I haven't done the shocks yet because it just seems like a, that's kind of a hassle. This other stuff, you know, other than the alignment, you know, tires and alignment, you're not doing yourself. But um, these three things here, the, the stabilizer, the sway bar, and the, the, and the front sumo springs, I did those myself. And it was just with basic tools, you know, on the side of my house, I was able to do those things. So that made sense because I didn't have to pay someone to do that. And I would probably even be able to do the airbags myself as well, or the rear sumo springs as well. So consider those things as kind of a starting point, or, you know, find you a shop that can help you with these things and kind of get started. And you will see an improvement. Now, is it going to be night and day difference? It's not going to be a night and day difference. It's going to be, a, you know, it's probably, I would say the handling and suspension with these five things is probably probably 30 to 40% better, which is pretty good. Um, you know, it still handles like a big van, like a big house on wheels. So it's not going to be great. It's not going to handle like a sports car or even an SUV. It's still going to feel heavy, but if it can track straight and stay in its lane and just, you know, be comfortable to drive down the highway. That's really what I was shooting for, and that's what these things are accomplishing. So hopefully you found that information helpful. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Uh, check out the links in the description. Leave comments. If you have other things that, that you found that are helpful for your RV, leave those down in the comments for others to, to read. And uh, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.